Hi everyone, I'm Ava. I'm an American living here in the Netherlands. And today I wanted to talk to you about some food differences that I've noticed living here as an American. Now, of course, one expects certain kinds of foods to be different when they move abroad and immerse themselves in a completely different culture. And I expected the same. But much to my surprise, I noticed that some of the food items or some of the ways of eating that I thought were pretty standard happen to be done quite differently here. So today I wanted to talk to you about these little differences. Now, usually when I make a video like this, I really try to break the list down into smaller chunks. So maybe I'll have some categories. I wish I had a list like that for you today. Like I'm going to tell you about five food differences, but I found myself writing down a list of really small differences and variations that I've noticed here in the Netherlands. So I couldn't really categorize them in any way. Apologies in advance. You have been warned if this video sounds a little bit like I'm reading off list of bullets that I wrote down because that's a little bit what you're going to get. Now, before I go into the rest of the video, I wanted to say if you are someone who has watched my videos before and you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that button. It's free. And if you are new here, welcome. Anyway, I need to shut up now and start talking to you about pancakes. So I feel like pancakes are one of those things that are done differently across the world. Like not every culture may have them, but I feel like they tend to vary ever so slightly in different countries. So I kind of expected that to be the case here in the Netherlands. And I didn't realize that Dutch pancakes were actually a thing that, you know, people in other places knew about, and they are done differently in ways that I really did not expect. The first big difference for me is, Okay, in the US, we eat our pancakes for breakfast. And these pancakes tend to be thick, they tend to be fluffy, it's because we stuff them with baking powder to make them actually like cakes that you make on a pan, as the name suggests. Why am I explaining this to you? But that's kind of what I'm used to with my American pancakes. And we like to eat them all stacked on top of each other. Now, here in the Netherlands, I found that the Dutch don't eat their pancakes for breakfast. Oh no, we're gonna get creative there. They're gonna take their pancakes and eat it for dinner. I did not think to complain when I first heard about this and when my girlfriend first made me pancakes to eat for dinner, I was just surprised. And on top of it, I was surprised to see that she started spreading these pancakes out on her pan really thin and the end result to me was a little bit like a crepe. She gets upset at me every time I say this, and maybe you as a Dutch person watching this will too. But to me, they look more like crepes than the image of the pancake I have in my head from the US. Now, I mentioned that the American pancakes are stacked one on top of each other. That's how we like to eat them. We like to slice slice through. In the Netherlands, we eat our pancakes one at a time. I think that's quite dangerous actually, because I do think in the US when you get this big stack of pancakes, they're completely unhealthy and the Dutch pancakes are a much, much healthier version. But in the US, I know how many pancakes I'm eating because I see them in front of me. Whereas here, because you just grab a pancake and put one in your plate and you eat it and you move on to the next one, I find that I kind of lose count <laughs> on how many pancakes I'm eating and I could really just finish most of the pancakes made and there aren't that many left for other people. Anyway, Dutch pancakes can be dangerous because you're eating them one at a time on your plate. Another cute difference that I've noticed is that in the US, we like to put maple syrup on our pancakes. That's kind of the standard. And then of course you have blueberries, strawberry syrup, whatever. And we put fruit toppings on our pancakes as well. The Dutch actually have a syrup that's not made of maples. It's stroop syrup, which people know from stroop waffles. What I've also been told is that you can take your pancake, put it on your plate, and then grab the bottle of stroop and write your name on the pancake or the first letter of your name. And then you can proceed to roll up this pancake and then you eat it. I don't think the American pancakes are made in a way in which you can roll them up. So I also thought that was cute. And now I like to roll my pancakes before I eat them. The Dutch also like to put cheese and bacon along with apples on their pancakes. And you can actually combine these things. I was really surprised at first when my girlfriend said, yes, in the Netherlands, we don't put 
chocolate chip on our pancakes or blueberries, because we eat them for dinner, we put things like cheese on our pancakes. And at first I thought, okay, cheese and pancakes is already pretty weird, but that's something I'm willing to try. And then she mentioned that you also add strobe to it. I was so skeptical at first. I never thought this could be a combination that I would like. But then I took one bite into it and now I just refuse to eat a pancake that doesn't have both cheese and strobe on it because it is so good. Unless it's an American pancake, of course, because then you're eating it for breakfast. But I have to say that I am completely in love with that combination. But to Americans, putting bacon on your pancake is something from an entirely different universe. I think that's also kind of what prompts me to say that it's a little more like the crepe or the crepe culture because you can put whatever you want on it. The next food item I want to talk about today are fries. When I talked about pancakes, I mentioned how Americans eat pancakes for breakfast and the Dutch eat pancakes for dinner. Fries are another thing they eat for dinner. When spending some time here in the Netherlands, initially when people would say they were going to go grab fries for dinner, I would raise my eyebrows a little bit because in the US, fries are normally a side that you get with your burgers, with you know whatever food item, but they aren't really normally eaten on their own because usually they really are a smaller portion, like more of a portion that you would get as a side dish. Here in the Netherlands, it is completely acceptable to eat just fries for dinner. So here I was thinking that the Dutch really have their portion control down. It's like, wow, what we would consider a side is considered an actual full meal here. That was until I had myself one of those cones of fries. And then I saw what they were talking about. Fries have to be one of the only things here that are larger than what you would get in the US. When I go to a place like Monica Fist and get a cone of fries or you know a portion of fries, even if I get the small one, it is the size of my freaking head. I'm not even exaggerating. And yes, I have a small head, but I do not think that a whole portion of fries should be the size of my head. It is insane. Extremely delicious, don't get me wrong. But I was really surprised to get this because here I am thinking that everything in the US is bigger than what we get in the Netherlands, except for fries. So then of course, it made a little more sense to me how people could just eat fries alone for dinner. And actually, ever since I moved to Utrecht from Amsterdam, I've passed the Monica Fis, several Monica Fisses near the station, and I see people eating fries for dinner all the time. The next difference that has to do with fries that I've noticed is that in the US, we get our fries with ketchup. That's the default. If you don't ask for anything else, that's what you will get. And that's typically what people eat their fries with in the US. I think that's a pretty American thing, right? Ketchup with your food. And I know that Europeans tend to make fun of Americans for it. It's like you take your food and you just put a lot of ketchup and there is some truth to it, but for the point I want to make for this video is that we eat our fries with ketchup typically. Now here I notice again, the Dutch creativity emerges. They don't just eat their fries with ketchup and that is not their default. Their default happens to be mayo. And if you've watched Pulp Fiction, you may be familiar with the line of they drown them in that sh So here in the Netherlands, if you go to a cafe or a bar and you order some fries, you will get it with mayo if you don't specify anything else. However, the Dutch also like to eat their fries with a whole bunch of other condiments, like curry. You could also get something called a patasha orlo that involves a mix of ketchup, mayo, or is it curry, mayo, and then raw onions. So you could really get a full meal just out of fries that are completely, completely loaded with condiments. So the first time that I got myself one of these cones of fries, I was surprised to find right on top, sticking out of the cone, a little wooden fork. In the US, I've never received fries that way with a little fork to eat it with. And I think this is really illustrative of the fact that the Dutch actually like to eat with a knife and a fork more than Americans do. Don't get me wrong, in the US, we use a knife and a fork a lot of times, especially if you go to a more upscale restaurant. And of course, very many food items just require a knife and a fork in the Western world. But to me, I really noticed the difference with fast foods. For example, in the US, we eat pizza with our hands. That I think is pretty standard, unless you maybe go to a restaurant that's a bit more of scale and they happen to have a specialty pizza there. Here in the Netherlands, 
When I've been in a group with other Dutch people and we've ordered pizza, I've noticed that often I'm the odd one out who is using her hands, whereas everybody else is using a knife and fork. And fun fact, I'm from New York and New Yorkers tend to eat their pizza a little differently from the rest of the United States. In New York, the New York slice is this huge thing and it's so big that you often can't just eat it open faced. You need to kind of fold it over like a sandwich and then eat it. So you can imagine the stares that I get when I try to do this with the pizza over here when everybody else is nicely sitting with their knife and fork. Oh, I can't help it. So sometimes just to avoid people looking at me or I think it's my own consciousness, I just use a knife and a fork anyway in the beginning and then towards the end I resort to my hands. And it's not just pizza I've seen this with, I've also seen this with burgers. Now I think burgers are notoriously difficult to eat no matter where you are in the world. They are these deliciously messy, messy things. So much so that I've seen all of these videos where they try to explain to you the best way to eat a burger. Like you need to turn it around upside down so that the burger doesn't disintegrate into a hot mess. Well, point being, burgers are messy and I've seen the Dutch tackle this problem again with a knife and a fork. From what I've seen, I can't tell whether I or the Dutch are more successful. Now let's talk about bread. I have noticed a few differences that add up to quite a lot between the bread in the US and here in the Netherlands. Now I've talked about how I love Dutch bread. I go to the supermarket and I am overwhelmed with the choice of delicious bread. It's amazing. And what I have learned in my time here is that the Dutch really like to eat their bread fresh. In the US, we have quite some preservatives in our bread. So if you just leave them out and you eat them as the week goes on, the bread tastes fine. And that's what we like to do. Whereas here in the Netherlands, the Dutch freeze their bread and then they take it out. They let it unfreeze and then they eat it. Americans definitely like to freeze things, but I don't know so much about bread. The only type of bread that I've heard people freeze back in the US are bagels. If they've ordered specialty bagels from somewhere and then they want to preserve them to eat fresh at a later date. Whereas I haven't really heard too many people or anybody really do this with bread. If you are an American watching this and you freeze your bread and you're not living in the Netherlands, let me know. But if you are Dutch, I'm guessing this must be pretty standard to you. Another indication to me about how the Dutch really like their bread fresh is the section of bread that you can find in the supermarkets here in the Netherlands that you can take home and then finish off the baking at home. So they're pre-baked, but then you can take them home, put them in the oven, and then you have some pretty fresh bread to eat that's warm. There have been several weeks since I moved to the Netherlands that I have bought bags and bags of these bread, these brooches that you can take home and bake in the oven. Cause to me, eating this warm, fresh bread is so good. And I know that that's not even the bread Dutch people consider fresh, but I'm pretty obsessed with those things. Now, continuing on the topic of bread, when I first started learning Dutch, I also used the app Duolingo a little bit. And one of the words that Duolingo is obsessed with teaching newcomers to the Dutch language is boterham. And I learned in my Dutch class that I was taking in the US, aside from Duolingo, that a boterham refers to a open face sandwich. In English, at least the American English kind that I speak, a sandwich refers to two slices of bread squishing something in between. You can even use it as a verb to say that I am being sandwiched in between two people. So the two bread aspect is pretty important in our definition of a sandwich. But as I said with the boterham, it seems to be the case that you're referring to one slice of bread with toppings on it. But pretty recently, I actually heard some Dutch people talking to each other about what they call a boterham. And they were asking each other if they called two slices of bread or one slice of bread a boterham. If I remember my Dutch textbook correctly, I was taught that it was one slice of bread. So in the Netherlands, if you ask for two boterhams, you will get two slices of bread. And in the US, you would get four slices of bread and two sandwiches. Whew. That was not an easy thing to do. You never know when you're expected to do basic arithmetic in a video. And speaking of boterhams and sandwiches, you guessed it, Dutch creativity emerges as well. As some of you might know, in the US, we really like to eat cereal, which is basically an excuse to eat candy with some milk in the mornings. In the Netherlands, a way of doing that is by putting chocolate sprinkles on your bread. And that is considered a perfectly acceptable breakfast or even lunch. 
The Dutch also put various other sweet things on their bread that I wouldn't think about. So you can get these large chunks of chocolate or these little balls of cinnamon. All of this is appropriate to put on your bread in the morning. Something that I really like is part of the Dutch lunch. I went to a cafe several months ago and I saw that you could get croquetta, which are these fried dough thingies that you can put on your bread, smush it on your bread and eat it. So I think in the US we would just eat croquetta on their own, but here you can get your croquette on bread. I'm not complaining, those things are delicious, but it's not something I would typically have thought to put on bread. And finally, let us talk about mashing and smushing. In the US, Americans like to mash some of their food. Of course, we have mashed potatoes, which I just had for Thanksgiving recently, and they are delicious. But in the Netherlands, the Dutch take mashing and mushing to a whole other level. Some of the traditional Dutch dishes are actually those that revolve around mashing and mushing. I don't know why I feel the need to say mashing and mushing together. They're the same thing. Just beating the crap out of their food. So stompwood, for instance, is a traditional Dutch dish that is made out of mushing various vegetables together and cooking them. And I think you could also add meat. Uh, I haven't actually tried stompwood because it's typically made with meat. There are also a couple of other dishes that way. Hutspult is another one that involves mashing carrots, potatoes, onions. And it, to me, it seems like a subset of stompwood. I don't know. So I found it quite fun to learn when I moved to the Netherlands that this was one way of cooking traditional Dutch food by mashing it. So those were a few food differences that I noticed in my time here in the Netherlands. I doubt that this is an exhaustive list. I'm curious about what you guys have experienced in terms of how people eat their foods in these two places. As usual, I look forward to hearing what you have to say in the comments down below.